how to generate images with Python and the OpenAI API with the DALL-E model. It's surprisingly easy. Let's see how it's done. Before we start coding, we do need to make sure we have the OpenAI module installed. If you don't, then you will need to use pip. I've got two versions installed, so I need to make sure I set uh, pip3 there. Install, and it's just called OpenAI. There we go, that might take a couple of seconds. We're done, we're ready to start programming. Over in a new file here, and we'll need to import the module that we just installed. So import OpenAI. The first thing to do is to tell the OpenAI module what our OpenAI API key is. You should have that already. If you do not, then see my other video about OpenAI API keys for that. The easy way to do it, which is not really the best way, is to do OpenAI module and a dot API underscore key equals and then type in your API key directly. But that's not ideal. If you accidentally share this code, if you put it on GitHub, if you make a video on and share it on YouTube, then your key is going to be shared with other people who could use your account and run up a bill for you, which you don't want. So it's better to put your API key into an environment variable, which is basically storing it separately in a separate file, so it's not in the code, but we can still access it from the code. I'm just going to jump ahead and do that now. If you want to see how I do that, then check out my other video about using environment variables to hide your keys in Python. That's better. I feel safer now. The next thing is to ask the API for an image and we get a response. So we need to store that response somewhere. We'll create a variable called response. That will equal, first of all, the OpenAI module. And then within that, there are various models. There's uh, chat completion for the text, as you would with uh, ChatGPT, for example. But we want image, nice and easy. And what are we going to do? We're going to create an image. So we use the method create. And brackets there. I'm going to press enter just to give us some space because we're going to put a few things in there. But that's it, really. That's the function to create the image. And now we need a few attributes inside there. So what do we need? We need a prompt. Okay, I'm just going to leave that empty for a second. Then we need to tell it how many we want to create, how many images, and you can have from one up to 10. So let's say just one to start off with, make sure it works. And then you can set a size. Uh, there are only three sizes at the moment. There is, well, they're all square. There's 256, uh, there's 512, and then there's 1024. Um, at the start, I recommend going with the smallest, so 256 by 256 until you get images that you're kind of happy with and then you can start increasing because the smaller images are a little bit cheaper than the bigger images. Check out the openai.com slash pricing page for the current price of images. Right, we've got those set up, but we need to put in a prompt. Uh, I'm going to put in something about puppies. Let's have a nice happy picture. I've discovered recently that if you want kind of clip art style, then caricature works quite well. So a car caricature of a cute, happy puppy. There we go. Right. Next, we get our response. Hopefully we've got a really good picture and we want to see it. So first of all, let's print out the response to the console and see what it looks like. Right. I'm saving this. Let's run it and see what happens. So over in the terminal, I am going to run this program. I called it generate image one, I think. Okay. It'll take a couple of seconds while it goes and creates the image, obviously. And then it should give us one blob. Oh, here we go. With a couple of things in it. It gives us the created, that's a timestamp, which we probably don't need. And then a data array or list. And it's a list of all the images. We only asked for one, so there's only one thing in there. And the only thing it gives us is the URL. So we can now go to a browser to open this. Let's copy that and paste it into a browser. Write a new browser window. I'm going to paste that URL in, press enter. Sometimes it gets, oh, I was going to say, sometimes it takes a while, but it was quick this time. There we go. We have our cute, happy puppy. That is how to create an image with the OpenAI API, and how easy was that? But there are a few more other things that you could do, so let's go into that now. Uh, what I will do first of all is actually save this, and we can use this image for the next part. Uh, I'll save that, I'll just call it puppy. 
They're always output as a PNG file, by the way. Right, I've saved that. The next thing back in our code is an alternative way of creating an image, and that is to use an existing image and just create a slightly different version, a slightly different variation. And that's what we do is we change this function here from create into create underscore variation. So we don't need the prompt anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. But we do need to specify the image that we want to use as like the base image. So in that case, it's image, and this will equal not just the name of the image. We actually need to use the Python built-in function open to open the file. So now the image name is PNG. Make sure you've got it in your folder, obviously. And then we need to put in the mode. So by default, it's read only, which is fine. But this image is a binary image. So we need to put in a B there, R for read and B for binary. And then a comma at the end. All right, now we should be ready to go again. Back in the terminal, I'll clear this and run the code again. Okay, that seems a bit slower, but never mind, we got there. Right, let's try it again then. Copy this and over in the browser window again. Let's see how different or similar it is. Right. Aha, uh, is it different? Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So you get an image you like. The input image has to be square and then you can generate something very similar to it. Nice. Now, one other thing I wanna do is just to make things a little bit easier for you. At the moment, we're getting the response and we're finding the URL, we're copying that and pasting into a browser window. But we can just add a few more extra lines which will automatically open the image in a browser window for us. So let's look at that. I'm going back to the first version of the script where we had just the create function and a prompt. So we create a completely new image. I will actually create two images this time and let's change the prompt to an oil painting, why not? Okay, I'm going to run this and print the response first of all because I want to see again the structure of what we get back from the API. So over in the terminal, let's run. Okay, ah, as you can see this time, yes, we've now got two images. Um, I won't bother opening them, we'll have a look at them later. We've got the created timestamp, so again, we don't need that. So what we want to extract to pass to the web browser is just the URL. So what kind of layers do we need to go down to get to that URL? Well, we've got the main object. We need the data thing inside that, which is a list. And then inside that data list, well, there are, in this case, two items. And each item has got a URL key. That's what we want. So first of all, let's grab this data list. We'll put it in a new variable. It's actually a list of images. So let's call it images. And this is the oops, response, and the key name is data. Okay, we now want to loop through those images and from each one, grab the URL. So for loop, for each, what should we call it? Well, each thing in the list is an image. So let's call it an image in the list of images. And what should we do with it? We want to extract the URL, and we'll put that in a variable to keep it clean. So. The URL is going to be, let's just go back to the terminal again, double check. There we go. It's this object here with the key called URL. Nice and easy. So image object and the key is URL. Right, that's the URL extracted and ready. Now we want to pass that to the web browser, open it in, a, in the web browser. This is where Python is so beautiful. It's got a built-in module called web browser, which does exactly what we need. So we don't need to install anything. We can just import web browser. And now it gets even better. We want to open something in a web browser. What's the code for that? It's webbrowser.open. Oh, I love it. I love Python. Webbrowser.open. And the argument for that is going to be the URL that we just extracted. And that should be it. So if we save this and go back over to the terminal, I'll clear that so it's clean. Uh, right, let's run the code again. And fingers crossed, it will open the web browser with two tabs, each one containing an image. 
Oh, a hit seems to have worked. Okay, so it chopped off a bit again. That's the API's fault, really. Um, yep, yeah, oil painting of a cute happy puppy. And there's another one. The other, that was a previous tab. So there we go, it worked. That is how to create multiple images and have them open automatically in a web browser. And of course, you also now know how to create variation of any of these as well. I hope you liked that video. Thanks for watching.